Hey there, virtual mechanics. Thanks for clicking. Hope your day is going well. So, maybe you already knew, and I'm being Captain Obvious here, but survival mode can be a huge and also fun challenge. Trustworthy and I are already considering base designs to deal with persistent robot raids and random sneak attacks, but for now, we've made a little settlement out of a mechanic station near the crash site where players first land. Okay. Let's do a quick tour of the base itself, its features, and then some beginner survival SUV building basics because we're going to need something for exploring this huge map, especially if we want to haul any resources around. If you've not already found this location in the game, but you can find your way back to the crash site, Follow the dirt path lined with ember trees and keep going straight until you find a clearing with an abandoned building and a parking lot. Continuing a jog down this road will eventually get you near the vicinity to see a cluster of red structures with a glowing wrench fixed on top of the main building. This is where we can find other craft bots that the game has to offer so that we can really get some projects going. But before that, we gotta find a battery to power them up. So, conveniently, the battery's location is on site. Along the big garage, there are three cylinder-shaped housings. The battery is located in the second room, but so is a hay bot. So careful when opening the door. It goes a bit survival horror when this thing, especially when it residually keeps creeping up on you every few days. As you can see on this very mini base tour, this has become a giant storage chest. In the beginning, it was worse. Lined with circuit boards, component kits, wax, and corn because I lacked the materials for chests to hold it all. I'm still working on that. But these tubes seem to work well for keeping things safe and organized. Only number two remains empty for our pet Haybot. Build videos are bound to happen for this game as they have for Garden Paws, but knowing how much I love cars? There could be some slight favoritism towards making things that move. If buildings is your thing, doing more of it across other life simulator type games on this channel if you're interested in stuff like that. Now on to the outside grounds. I'm not sure I'd recommend permanently leaving a farm this close to a base. Currently mine is right up against the building between storage just for the prioritizing of lazy crop farming. Among the other first goals Trustworthy and I decided on was the acquisition of spud guns. As suggested, that's a projectile weapon that fires potatoes. And that I'll cover in an upcoming video along with the vehicle build and the current construction that's not necessarily needed, but helpful for that goal. The reason why it's not going to be great in the long term is because your crops can be attacked by a horde of robots at night via raid. Scaling with the amount of crops planted, the more that will come, and increasingly stronger enemies too. Hence this is why so tiny. It works on a point system for each fruit or vegetable planted. The sum of them is a crop value. The crop value for triggering a raid is 9. Approximately every 10 points of value, the bot challenge is increased. This farm plot is going to get relocated and have some kind of fortification to keep off the pests. The large building at the mechanic station houses the console for a variety of crafting bots. Inserting the battery from the housing room too will activate the console and the mini craft bot already pre-installed into the wall. The selection consists of the core craft bot with all your craftable parts. You may already have the materials for it and it's the best investment you can make. The second to prioritize crafting is the cook bot. This expands your menu to foods that restore 100 hunger. Resource collectors are also helpful tools. They aren't just fancy looking chests, but one that will auto vacuum the resources you're carrying from a few yards away. Convenient when beginning to collect large amounts of wood, stone, and metal. This way you don't have to refine by hand, but can take it back to the refiner. There's also a dress bot. I'd gladly show you one, but most of the metal that's been needed is dedicated to vehicle builds. I'll get there, and I'll do a video of opening up some of the clothing boxes hiding under the bed in Housing Tube 1, so if you want to stay tuned for that, subscribe or check back in a few weeks. Craftbots drop from a dispenser in the ceiling and can be picked up by right-click for setting up your workspace. More veteran pros of the game might be able to tell me what locations are better, 
but it seems that the mechanic station is a fairly ideal place to set up at least a semi-permanent homestead while you're getting started in the game. Bots spawn around the edges but rarely wander close enough to aggro the base. You really only have to pay attention to cows that can attract some hostile varieties in. Leaving creations in the area will generally keep them safe, but I have once or twice come back to a bot beating on something. It's worth building some barriers or other base solutions in the future. And what's in the craft bot may initially not look like an overwhelming lot, but oh my goodness is there an overwhelming lot that you can do with the pieces that are here. Can we just say that this game is freaking awesome? My geek meter can't register the awesome level. Just one trip into the Steam Workshop is a testament to how far people's creativity can go with just a handful of items. The builders of this game are brilliant, and I can only aspire to be that good. These are just a few of the things I've found to play with so far to give you an idea, or lots of ideas. That makes you want to jump into creative mode at this very moment trying to see if it will work out. Since picking up this game, that impulse has been creeping up on me surprisingly often as I'm determined to experiment and fail until vehicles come out functional. Perhaps even decent looking for scrap parts? The larger craft bot provided by the mechanic station has wheels and tires that aren't clunking scrap, among other helpful parts like suspension to make vehicles better suited for travel and hauling. One of my biggest recommendations when getting started is to put those to use as soon as possible. So I personally started with a rolling metal sheet, which evolved to a truck, and then eventually an SUV, and this has become something of our primary exploration vehicle for two. Don't worry if the building in this game sometimes seems intimidating to learn, it's just one step at a time, and before you'll know it, you'll have some cool chassis. There are pipes of different varieties to help a vehicle look a little bit more realistic than just the wood blocks we were using from the scrap car. Also convenient for mounting the newly available suspension parts. Just a couple of curved and small pipes can usually create the setup that you're looking for. Consider what the ride height might look like by the time you're done adding the weight. Component kits can be used to upgrade the stiffness for the suspension for additional stability. Pipes can help her out for more complicated options later. I saw someone doing double wishbone on builds. Cool stuff! And for now, this is just as light as possible on materials since we don't have a lot. Getting anything operating to move materials is going to be really helpful in speeding up your efficiency of gathering and building. And we'll be back to basics. To make an SUV, we'll need at least one seat, an engine, six bearings, and four wheels, along with a choice of chassis material. This build will also include a passenger seat, a secondary engine for drilling, gas container, lights, switches, controller, and a piston for moving the tailgate. It easily seats two, carries one resource collector, two small chests, and still has room for extras. It takes quite a while to run it low on gas with a full container, too. After you've made your chassis frame and attached the suspension, take it for a test drive. Might as well use it to pick up more stuff. Certainly sped up the process for Trustworthy and I because in the next two trips I had enough to finish the bulk of the project aside from the parts stolen from our roadside shack. A quick review here to get this thing moving in an intuitive forward direction when you're happy with your chassis build, grab your connection tool and connect the engine to the seat. Then connect the engine to at least the two rear wheels. If you've upgraded the engine, you can go all-wheel drive by connecting four. Now, you're powered. But, we need control. Connect the seat to the two front bearings that are placed on top of the suspension setup. Note the arrow of the directions and use the right click button to change directions. You want your wheels all pointing forward, or they'll fight against each other. And on the bearings up front, when facing head-on, a clockwise direction achieves conventional steering. If you've already added a gas container, connect that to the engine as well. It can really help in the metal acquisition by attaching a drill bit to the engine with a bearing. A pipe extension may be required. Set up a switch on it and use the connection tool to join the engine with the bearing that attaches the drill. This can be used on the rock squares that you've probably found while exploring. You'll be swimming in metal and stone once you have this little helper car. 
A couple things to note about choosing materials for a vehicle build. Durability and weight can play a huge role in how it drives or manages weight and motion. I suspect buoyancy will be relevant with constructing boats as well, but for a vehicle project that's meant to support some weight from some resource containers for example, you may want to consider both weight and durability of metal or concrete. Bots like to attack vehicles as much as they like to beat up humans it seems. They can destroy things. Wood can be swapped in for keeping portions of the vehicle light to achieve a better ratio, and diamond plate blocks can provide weight in a nice front bumper to hit bots with on the roadway. As we get more materials, it's easy to add extras like rollover bars, step rails, lights, and more gadgets as we toy with each craft bot invention. Keep experimenting with design until you achieve something you like. At this point, I've added a tailgate extension using pistons to open the back. This allows me to drop a tin shack plank over it for a mini flatbed, but you could go with just a swing door for easy access. Still learning all the features of the controller part, but the pistons are fairly straightforward to hook up. Set up a switch, connect the controller to the pistons and the switch. Open the controller to adjust the piston length and speed. Gadgets like these can also be operated from the seats by connecting the switch to the seat. So you can do the same with the lights and hook them up to a switch for further connected to the seat for convenience. A passenger seat can also accommodate switches, just FYI. With a suitable survival SUV, it's time for us to go exploring for a view of the map's assorted biomes and points of interest. The map is generated procedurally, but in the mix we'll get mostly the foresty green landscape. Paint flowers and wax can be found everywhere and regenerate quickly. Notable biomes are the charred burning forests where you can hammer down trees for timber needed in considerable crafted items. In the autumn biome, it's cotton that becomes readily abundant and the areas are identifiable by a sharp contrast of landscapes turning shades of a brown hue fading green and purplish reds, but be mindful around these areas for the large and rather tough to kill farm bots. The abandoned and crumbling buildings are filled with basically bots and loot. They will respawn within a few in-game days if you're away from that area. There will always be more circuit boards for you to farm. But for a harder challenge, there are warehouses. I went once, only once. Learned after getting shot dead in the face the first time that a spud gun would serve a barrier to entry here. We're not far from that goal and I'll definitely do a quick video on what all that entails. Other map points of interest include a second mechanic station, identical to the one we toured earlier and activated the same way. There will be four packing stations for produce involved in the objective of trading with what seems to be one of the few humans on this planet or at least the only human with an interactive menu. If you haven't already stumbled across these stations, keep following the road a ways as all of them are located along the road at opposite ends of the map. Two are for vegetable packing and two are for fruit. The vegetable station found nearest to the mechanic base is a good starting point in which to find the trader. His home is nested in the hills to the north behind the veggie packing station. As you get around to the back, keep driving straight and you'll start to see signs that say keep out. That's how you know you've found the trail. When in need of chemicals, take a road trip and see if you can find the other mechanic station. On the way, you're likely to spot a cluster of large tanks that have a glowing pinky sludge around it. This is a convenient pickup for chemical when you're trying to mass produce something such as concrete. There will also be oil pools on the map, where in much the same way you can throw down a container with a vacuum pump to stock up. Remember taking along a beacon to mark the oil pool. I still haven't been able to relocate the only one I found earlier, and don't be a sad panda like me. If you're feeling super brave, the two other noticeable points of interest are the Silo District and Rune City. In both of these zones, the enemy bot force is fierce and includes rather giant farm bots. Hopefully you have a spud gun when you go and creep very carefully. The silo district has a somewhat ground exterior appearance similar to the entrances of warehouse. 
But the district is different in a large network of what looks like chemical processing plant instead of a several story building. Ruined city is densely packed, dilapidated buildings like the ones you explore through on the map connected with a road system. As a patient sniper, you could get some good loot just by hanging out from above. Without a vehicle, getting to these locations would be extremely time consuming, but you can make it out there around a day and a half in game. At this point, the game is very self-directed and that's not a bad thing. Though there's a timed day, you're not returned to your bed or forced to rest. The only reason to pay attention is perhaps any incoming raids that are active at midnight. A dev blog released a few months ago, there was a discussion of what's coming to survival mode, including a quest line and a progression towards creating an endgame. Maybe by next update, we'll see some changes to how survival mode may look different, or have new objectives added that will alter any of the goals that we set currently. They promise new interactive menu items, and we're really looking forward to seeing what all they mean. I mean, the more I play with this game, the better it gets while learning all the tools. Its fun is only exponentially growing at this point, and I can't farm materials fast enough. For the creative mix of fun, I can't compliment the development team enough. My only gripe is the occasional lag monster, but it's also understandable that optimization is hard and something I know nothing about solving, so I'll just shut my trap and let them do their best. I figure they already are. Aren't you kind of a little excited about seeing what you can make? And I know I am. Right now, I'm mid-making a semi-truck project to move all this produce that will be one of my next videos up. If I come across any helpful tricks, I'll be sure to include them. But also, I'd like to take tips from others, so drop them in the comments below. Thank you for sticking around this long, and I hope this video was helpful on your survival journey and scrap mechanic. Let's get to building all! Take care, and bye bye